So Paul, we know a little bit about space, so now I think it's time to start exploring what we're doing in space. And I think what better way to start when, than exploring the moon? Now, exploring the moon is a source of deep disappointment to me in many ways. I mean, and I think I, to a lot of people, to be honest. I mean, showing my age, I was, I can just about remember, I was about four years old, the very last of the Apollo landings. I was too young to remember Apollo 11, but I can remember Apollo 17. December I was, 72. Yes, so I would have been um, five years old at the time. There you go. We're not <laughs> dating you on purpose, but... And it all seemed so exciting then, the astronauts landing on the moon, and then it stopped. So, and we've not been back since. Um, so what went wrong? Yeah, it, it stopped in a big way. And I think in order to understand firstly what went wrong, we have to understand why we even tried in the first place. And we have to look at the world at the time. And colored wise, blue, we have relatively the Western states, uh, i.e. I US, Canada, Europe, and we have the USSR and its groups. And this was the world at the time of the 60s. Yes, I can remember being told in primary school what to do in the case of a nuclear attack. I mean, we lived in a lot of fear back then about what would happen. Well, and I think rightfully so. This is actually the growth of nuclear armament or warheads from warheads from the 50s to today. And you can see in the 60s and the 70s and 80s, there was a substantial 35,000 warheads. I mean, <laughs> yes, that's... <laughs> that's a lot of warheads. And, and this is why this relates to space. Space was seen as this epitome of dominance, right? We, we had land, and then we saw the advent of the airplane. We kept going higher and higher and higher. And what better way then to go into space? It would be nice to think that people would have investigated the moon out of scientific desire to understand the moon, but we know that nothing opens the pocketbooks of governments so much as... Um, a rivalry or a potential military application. And look, to be honest, some of that rivalry still exists today that is fueling news exploration, but I think we're benefiting from a lot of science along the way. Now, before we obviously get to the moon, we have to get into space. And this starts with Sputnik, Sputnik 1. Sputnik 1. It's, you know, the, the grapefruit satellite, not very big, uh, but this was a sheer will of excitement and possibility in October 1957 when Sputnik 1 did uh, a few orbits around the Earth beeping down. Uh, and it's actually relevant for us here at Mount Stromlo. Uh, the Uppsala telescope was the first telescope to image Sputnik 1, only visible in the Southern Hemisphere. And the launch of this triggered a major panic in the United States in particular. They'd always complacently assumed that they were tops in science and they're having the Russians in over apparently leaping past them by launching this thing, it led to a massive panic, which in many good respects, like it, it uh, led to a huge investment in science education, for example, in schools, which many of the people that went on to found Silicon Valley got their start because of the education launched by the panic about red space. Well, these are the sort of the interesting benefits. As you said, it's that rivalry that pushes it, because I think we often think about, oh, the US landed on the moon in 1969, but the USSR got Sputnik 1 in October. They got the first animal, Laike, the first dog in space who sadly did not survive. And we'll hear more about why and when we talk about space medicine down the road. But this was only about a month after Sputnik. So they went from just putting something in space to now putting a living animal in space. That's a pretty big jump. Yes, and then, of course, they won with the first person in space as well. That's right. Yuri Gagarin, who uh, just a few years later, or a few short time later, did the first orbit and, as you said, the first human in space. And, you know, it's obviously commonplace now. Humans go into space. Sure, why was that a big deal? Why would you worry about a human going into space? Well, we didn't really understand how the human body would even survive the conditions of space. Yes, I'm sure you'll talk more about this in the space medicine section, but it's given that us and all our ancestors back to the first microbe have existed under gravity, it must be, you wonder, is there some mechanism in a cell somewhere that will not work under zero gravity? I guess that can't be the case, as every time you jumped in the air, you die, because you're in free fall for a brief moment while you go up and down, but... But do you have a catastrophic failure? Does it take a long time? Does the pressure differences, that nature of the vacuum that we talked about, change? There's all these little questions where, until you're essentially the guinea pig, you don't know. Mm. And then you take one step further. You're not only in space, you are literally in space. 
floating around in a spacesuit. That's right. Alexei Leonov became the first person to walk outside a pressurized capsule. Again, another what if would happen? Would they survive? Would they collapse like a star? Uh, all of these sorts of the things were at the beginning of we don't know what's happening, but as he said, investment in science pushing the boundaries. And in pretty much every case, Russia was winning this race. So what do you do? What is the next thing to do to win, essentially, or take the next big leap? Well, I guess what was thought was that uh, they had to go long term, to pick some goal that was maybe you know, sort of 10 years away, which would give the Americans a chance to overtake the Russians. If it was something that would be done next, the Russians are probably going to win that. But given a sort of, give a, have a goal that's so ambitious that it can't happen for the next seven or eight or 10 years, then maybe that gives the Americans a chance to catch up. That's right, and that was the moon. That was the reason that moon was the next step. We need to take that next chance of winning that race. So do you go from just putting a few more people in space or longer, or do you put someone and two people on an object 400,000 kilometers away and survive in a distant world? And that was the conquest of getting to the moon in first place, to win that race, to assert your dominance, and win the Cold War. That's right. It's always the case if a country's fighting up to each other, prestige, we've got to show that Americans are a great scientific nation. Science, I mean, a lot of very good science as we talk about in the planets part of the course. There's a lot of incredibly good science came from this. That's right. But if you'd just gone to the United States government and said, <laughs> spend this incredible amount of money uh, so we can get some lunar samples and work out whether the moon was formed by a giant impact or not, <laughs> no way. But if it's beat the Russians, yes. Mon and money flows. That's right. Money flowed. And that's the great point is we were able to get that amazing science out, as you said, but the money was flowing. And so this breaks the question, why did we stop? And that's what we're going to talk about next.